I wanted to make this quick video explaining to you why the Bitcoin blockchain technology is so important for human civilization. Now I'm making this video for non-technical people since I am a non-technical, non-developer, non-coder individual. So this is going to be really high level. I'm not going to be talking about technicalities and how the blockchain works. I'm just going to try to make this in the most simplistic way so you can understand what Satoshi Nakamoto did with Bitcoin and why is it so important and why blockchain technology in general is one of the greatest human inventions of our era currently, okay? So let's rewind back about nine years before Bitcoin came. So this is roughly 2007, 2006. Bitcoin came on the scene around the crash in 2008. So first of all, let's talk about digital currencies since that's what everybody knows Bitcoin for. It's uh, cryptocurrency, digital currency, etc. Before Satoshi Nakamoto, digital currency did not exist as it does exist today. They've tried many different iterations to create digital currencies in different formats and they failed. And I explain to you why. Because blockchain technology in general is not a new technology. It's actually many different technologies stacked upon each other and they work in a unique way together Hence, they've created this new operational system known as a blockchain. So it's nothing brand new. It's just a different way of viewing technology and putting them in a different stack and utilizing them in a different protocol that made it what it is today. So when we're looking at previous cryptocurrencies or previous digital currencies, there's a big flaw. And I'm just gonna keep this really high level and simple for you to understand. Okay, so if I want to give my friend Paul $5 of digital currency back in the day, there was really nothing stopping me from copying, pasting this digital code online and giving to somebody else. So if that's Paul over here, right? What's stopping me then from giving this to, let's say, Mike? Nothing. So there's no intrinsic value towards the code. So if I gave you $5 of digital code or digital value of code, there's nothing stopping me from copying, pasting that digital value of code and giving it to Mike. Also, there's nothing stopping you from you copying, pasting that code and giving to somebody else. So there's no intrinsic value towards code. Hence, you can have currency online because for currency to exist, it has to have intrinsic value uh, and it has to have a supply and demand mechanism where people can't manipulate it. It's, it's quite important for that, okay? So before the Bitcoin blockchain protocol, it was almost impossible for us to create a digital currency slash cryptocurrency that could not be manipulated, replicated, and duplicated. Okay, I just want you to keep that in mind. Before Bitcoin, digital currency was not possible how we see it today. So, then Satoshi Nakamoto came around and created the Bitcoin blockchain protocol. And what he did is remarkable. This is what he did. He solved that problem. So the problem, as Vitalik Buterin states, blockchain solves a problem manipulation. So what Satoshi did was he was able to add intrinsic value to the code. So he did this in a couple of ways. So I'm not gonna go into two technicalities about the blockchain, but I do wanna show you how he was able to solve this issue. So remember now, Satoshi comes around in 2008 and he was able to solve the problem of duplication, replication, and manipulation. Now code has intrinsic value. If I gave that $5 of code, right? If I gave 5 BTC to my buddy Paul, I don't have the 5 BTC anymore. The whole network sees that Paul has the 5 BTC. And if Paul sends the 5 BTC to somebody, the whole network sees that Paul sends that 5 BTC to somebody. Code has intrinsic value. That's a remarkable invention, a remarkable way of creating cryptocurrency. Now how this is done with the blockchain, I'm not gonna talk about too much about nodes and mining such, I'm just gonna go like really super high level. Every single time that I wanna send Bitcoin, let's say one Bitcoin to somebody, that Bitcoin creates a hash, a series of numbers. We'll put numbers over here. Big number one, three, five, eight, whatever. Big numbers, a series of big numbers. Now what everybody has to do is they have to take that number, they have to correspond it with their own personal record of the blockchain, the Bitcoin blockchain. Then they have to do computation to make sure it's never been replicated, duplicated through GPU mining to make sure it's legit. Everybody does this, every single computer, every single node on the network does this. And they have to correlate that with the master ledger. So everybody has the copy of the main Bitcoin. So if we're looking at this from a high level, 
and I'm just gonna butcher this to make it simple for you to understand. So if this is the master ledger, like the Bitcoin protocol right here that has every single transaction from zero till now, everybody has a copy, it's transparent. Everybody sees every transaction from every block connecting to the next block, everybody has that. Then if we go down, let's say we have a bunch of different nodes and computers running over here. All these different nodes and computers as well has the main, the main copy of the Bitcoin ledger. Every single one has it. So if, if I am here and Paul is over there, if I send Paul some Bitcoin, my, my transaction creates a hash. It creates a unique ID. Let's call it ID. That ID has to go through the network and, the, and each single node has to look at their personal copy to make sure this special ID has never been duplicated, replicated, manipulated before. So they got to check their personal network, uh, personal records, as well as they got to check the master ledger. Every single person has to do this. And they do this with GPU, hence uh, mining, etc. right? So they do this and that's how they verify. And once they verify, meaning, oh, we checked it, it's legit, it joins the blockchain. Now it becomes a whole history of every single transaction from the inception of Bitcoin uh, eight, nine years ago. So what Satoshi was able to do, he's able to do a couple of things. First of all, he solved the problem of double spend, copying, pasting code and giving out to other people. Now code has intrinsic value and that's amazing. That, that's remarkable technology. Number two, he created an open source platform. So Bitcoin is not closed, it's open source. It's a true means of communication from one person to the next. Anybody can go on the Bitcoin protocol, download the master ledger and see from day zero till now every single transaction, look at every single block and look at the whole history of the economy of Bitcoin and it doesn't matter who you are. That's remarkable. Number two, anybody can download a wallet. Anybody can send Bitcoin regardless of where you live, regardless of who you are, as long as you have an internet connection you can participate in the Bitcoin protocol. So what Bitcoin does, or the blockchain in general, does two amazing things. A, it created value into code. So beyond currency, now you can add smart contracts such as Ethereum, you can add uh, titles and deeds to that. Anything that's offline, you can implement now online into code to have intrinsic value that's not that is not duplicated, manipulated, and replicated. That's really important. Number two, it creates a system of freedom of speech, a freedom of expression. Because I, if I choose to do business with somebody overseas and certain banks stop you because of whatever legislations in your country, I now have a secondary op option. I choose to use Bitcoin, Ethereum to do commerce with other people around the world. But this goes beyond just commerce. This goes into actually choosing what you want to do as an individual because with blockchain technology of digital identity, like I mentioned earlier, you have digital deeds, you have all these offline things that can be implemented online. So that's kind of like a rough general overview of Bitcoin. I just want you to keep in mind, people ask what's so special about Bitcoin, it cannot be duplicated, replicated, manipulated. That's the beautiful thing about the blockchain. It's an open source protocol that puts intrinsic tangible value into code. Just think about that for a moment. Intrinsic, tangible value into code. And that's wonderful, okay? So there you have it, that's like the super high level. I didn't explain exactly how the blockchain works. I know I butchered a bunch of things, but I wanted you to understand from kind of like a high level aspect how it works. So what I want you to do from here on out, if you don't already have a Bitcoin and Ethereum wallet, download one, okay? And if you don't have Bitcoin and Ethereum, there's a link below this video for the exchange that I use on occasion to buy. And like always, I'm giving out Bitcoin and Ethereum, but you gotta leave a comment below this video with a suggestion for the next video. As well, if you found value in this video, subscribe to this channel. There's, I think there's a button here or somewhere there. Also share this video with your friends and I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.